Hello everyone. My name is Dr. E. Purshottam. Today I am going to discuss about characterization of nanomaterials by using scanning electron microscope that is SEM. In our previous videos already I discussed about XOD and AFM. So XOD, X-ray diffractogram and AFM electron microscope electron atomic force microscope that is AFM. In today's class I am going to discuss about the scanning electron microscope. So what is the working principle of scanning electron microscope? The electron beam you can observe this figure the electron beam is passing through the first condenser lens, second condenser lens and objective lens. These lenses are known as electromagnetic lens. The electron beam is passing through the electromagnetic lenses through the scanning coil of cathode ray tube. This cathode ray tube scans the sample surface and gives rise to sample image. From this sample image, we can characterize the sample characteristics. This is the <coughs> working principle. In this technique, an electron beam is formed onto sample surface kept in a vacuum by electromagnetic lenses. The beam is then scanned over the surface of the sample. The scattered electron from the sample is then fed to the detector and then to a cathode ray tube through an amplifier where the image are formed which gives the information of the sample. This is the working principle of SEM. So, construction and working of scanning electron microscope. So, this is the electron gun. From this electron gun, a monochromatic electron beam is produced. This electron beam is allowed to fall on the first condenser lens and also transmitted through the first condenser lens. So, these rays are passing in such a way because of, we observe here, condenser aperture. The electron rays move, can move in all the directions. The condenser aperture helps to move the electron beam in such a way and allow to pass on the <coughs> second condenser lens. From the second condenser lens, the electron beam passing through the objective aperture, scanning coil of CRT cathode ray tube. The cathode ray tube scans this electron beam. The electron beam is allowed to fall on the objective lens. The objective lens enlarge the image. So the electrons are electron beam transmitted through the objective lens and allowed to fall on the sample surface. The sample surface image scans the scanning coil cathode ray tube and gives rise to sample characterization. So this is also simple working. The electron gun produces a stream of monochromatic electrons. The electron stream is focused on sample or specimen surface kept in a vacuum by electromagnetic lenses. The stream of the electron beam is then scanned over the surface of the specimen interaction. From this specimen interaction, we can absorb the image and characterize the sample surface. So scanning electron microscope analysis, the incident monochromatic electron beam is incident on the sample. So this electron beam scattered back and also transmitted through the sample. The scattered and reflected electron beam, the top of the surface values we can explain using the scanning electron microscope. The bottom values we can explain using the transmission electron microscope. So you can observe here top side of the thick sample or bulk sample the interactions occurring on the top side of the thick or bulk sample results in scanning electron microscope. So what I am saying the top values that is the electron beam is incident and scattered back electrons. This is secondary electrons this auger electrons and x-rays these are we can explain using the scanning electron microscope so these bottom values we can explain 
using the transmission electron microscope so in this specimen interaction it has four more main electrons number one is backscattered electron secondary electron auger electron and x-rays so simply we can explain here the electron beam is incident on the sample so it can move in the same direction with 180 degrees this is the reflected electrons so in the same way the electron is incident on the sample scattered back nearer to the 180 degrees these electrons are called back reflected or scattered electrons so this back scattered electrons depends on the sample atomic number so if sample atomic number is more we get more brightness image if less atomic number of the sample we get less brightness of the image so we can observe here back scattered electrons we can see here when an incident electron collides with an atom in the specimen which is nearly normal to incident path we get back scattered electrons at nearly 180 degrees the intensity of back scattered electrons varies with the specimen's atomic number hence when back scattered electrons are collected and imaged high atomic number electrons appears brighter than lower atomic number electrons so simply we can explain here once again the incident monochromatic electron beam is incident on the sample and these electrons scattered back these electrons scattered back nearer to the 180 degrees these electrons are called scattered electrons this scattered electrons also gives rise to image the image depends upon the atomic number of the specimen if atomic number is more we get more brightness image using back scattered electron if atomic number is less the sample atomic number is less we get less brightness image of back scattered electrons so second one <coughs> secondary electrons secondary electrons the incident electron beam is incident on the sample atoms so this incident electrons emits the electrons from the atoms the released electrons the emitted electrons are called secondary electrons so secondary electrons so this is secondary electrons also gives rise to some image using this image we can we can characterize the sample image you can observe here secondary electrons when an incident electron passes very near or an atom in the specimen and produce secondary electrons each incident electron can produce several secondary electrons hence image formed collecting secondary electrons gives the topography of the sample once again i am telling here the incident electron beam is incident on the sample specimen atoms and released or emitted the electrons are called secondary electrons from this secondary electrons we can observe the topographical image using this image we can characterize the sample surface so third one <coughs> these are the auger electrons so this is third one auger electrons so the incident electron beam this is the incident electron beam the incident electron beam is incident on the sample atoms and the electrons are emitted as secondary electrons the emitted place vacancy the emitted place electrons vacancy is there the higher energy state electrons jumps and occupies this vacancy the higher energy state electrons jumps and occupied this vacancy the vacancy occupied electrons are called auger electrons auger electrons due to this auger electrons also we get some information of the sample so it gives the sample image due to this image we can characterize the 
sample surface. So we can observe here during the emission of secondary electrons a lower energy electron is released thus leaving a vacancy into inner shell a higher energy electron from the same atom can fall to the lower energy filling the vacancy the surplus energy is released by the emission of outer orbit electron these electrons are called auger electrons they have a characteristic energy these electrons are collected and sorted according to according to their energies to give compositional information about the sample so fourth one x rays fourth one x rays in auger electrons the higher state energy orbit electrons or higher energy state electrons jump from lower energy state vacancy orbits so the electrons jumps from higher energy state to lower energy state gives rise to some energy it released some energy in the form of x rays this x rays also gives rise to some image that image we can characterize we can observe here x rays when the vacancy due to the emission of secondary electrons is filled by the fall of an electron from higher orbit to lower orbit the energy difference in energy may be released as x rays hence x rays the emitted will have a characteristics energy unique to the element from which it originate so what i am saying the higher energy state electron jumps from the higher energy state to lower energy state with releasing some energy this releasing energy gives rise to x rays from this x rays we can observe some image from this image we can characterize the sample characterization so same applications the scanning electron microscope is used for topography and compositional analysis so this is a topographical analysis application compositional analysis application scanning electron microscope has been applied to the surface studies of metals ceramic polymers composites and biological materials for both topography as well as compositional analysis we can take using scanning electron microscope so scanning electron microscope is also used for morphology using this morphology we can observe the particle shape size and also arrangement of particles in the crystal so third one scanning electron microscope is also used for to take the information of crystallographic crystallographic so scanning electron microscope is only useful for single crystals crystal size less than 20 micrometers so fourth one the scanning electron microscope is used to view the surface of the device we can observe the surface of the device and characterize the sample so scanning electron microscope is used cross sectional analysis to determine the a device dimensions such as mosfet channel so the scanning electron microscope is used to cross sectional analysis so the final application in this class the scanning electron microscope is used to inspection of integral circuits online inspection of vapor processing productions so these are the same images so characterization of nanomaterials this is a small ant image so scanning electron microscope image of ant you can observe here so this is this ant eye inside the eye this is a topogra topographical topographical image of this ant eye so same image of ant eye topography you can observe here so this is the butterfly x scanning electron microscope image of 
butterfly eggs so this is the scanning electron microscope thank you one and all have a nice day thank you thank you one and all